Hi guys, how's it going? My name is Cost, and welcome back to the 1000 subscribers special where I'm gonna be showing you how I finish a track from the beginning all the way to the end. So in our last couple videos, we went over creating the drums, we went over inserting basic instruments into our track. Uh, we had the piano, we had the strings, uh, synthesizers, bass, did a little bit of something to top it off. We have the lead in there now, and I think we're about ready to arrange all these beautiful sounds that we have into a full song. But before I get into that, I think that we should talk a little bit more about what it means to mix a song. Um, basically when I'm mixing the instrumental all I'm doing is using equalizers to boost some of the sounds that I do want and to duck some of the sounds that I don't want to get me um, a cleaner feel to my instrumental so I'm gonna go in and show you what I mean by that keep in mind this is not gonna be perfect um, because if I were to actually do a perfect mix I would probably still be here in like two weeks um, that's why I don't come out with new sh all the time because I actually go into every little detail and um, run through it over and over and over again until I have the perfect sound that I really want. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to show you what I basically do for all the separate sounds so you can do something similar at home. So first thing I want to focus on is the kick drum right here. I'm going to go ahead and open my magic tool, Fruity Parametric EQ and I'm going to solo out the sound that I'm working on at the moment. Basically for the kick, I just want it to be a little bit more punchy, so I'm going to drag up certain frequencies that um, I feel make the kick just a little bit fuller. Um, this is going to be different for every kick, so please don't copy this one to one. Please just don't do it because it's not going to work. So here it goes. So I think that sounds pretty good. I dropped some of the low end to make the kick a little bit clearer. Boosted at about 97 hertz uh, to give it a little bit more punch. Um, also I boosted over here at 470 hertz to give it a little bit more of the high end and I took away some of the mids. And I'm going to show you why I did that in a second. Because we layer kicks, I'm going to go over to my second kick and um, also create a fruity parametric EQ and just hit play again. So what I did here was pretty much the exact opposite um, of what I did up here. The reason I am doing this is because I'm trying to fill out as broad as a frequency as I can with the kick to just make it sound a little bit fuller. Also to the second kick, I'm going to add a slight reverb just to make it come in a little bit heavier as well. So really nothing too intense, um, just a really, really low reverb here. Um, then we're going to go to our perk. For the first one, I'm going to add a stereo shaper. Just to give it a little bit more room. Um, also add uh, an equalizer away some of the low end um, because that's not really a sound that the clap produces. Um, on the second clap I'm basically going to do the same thing, um, put in an equalizer, put up some of the high ends to get it nice and crisp, 
and take out some of the low ends. Uh, that's a little bit too much there. Obviously, the claps need a little bit of reverb. And sorry about that sound that I just had. Um, I guess it's my CPU crapping out because I'm using uh, the screen recorder at the same time as I'm doing this. Um, this is like another little clap that I have. Um, I'm just gonna use the stereo shaper again. Pan it over a little bit. And there's the, there's a timb. I think it's called a tambourine. Not quite sure if that's the right thing. Take that down. Oh yeah. Stereo shaper on that. Now, the stereo shaper is a great tool to use, but you have to watch out with the delay over here. Um, especially if you're doing something like drums, it's very rhythmic. And if you put too much delay on it, it's um, gonna throw the whole song out of rhythm. I have had problems with that in the past, so I try not to mess with the delay too much there. Okay, so again, I have to apologize for that brief moment of the silence there, but um, I just had to concentrate a little bit on what it is that I was doing. Okay, so basically when you're mixing a full instrumental, 
um, the things that you're watching out for is the way that the separate instruments play together. Um, so you're basically trying to fill out as much of the frequency range as you can without making it sound to full. So for example here with the bass I put the equalizer here and with the other bass I put the equalizer to this. And basically what I'm doing here, I'm bringing out some of the frequencies specific to this bass and with this one I'm bringing out some of the frequencies specific to this bass. Um, so if you were to lay them over top of each other, you would have a fairly wide frequency image. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but it's just something that you want to keep in mind. Um, for example, here I got the sound shorty. And if you look at that sound compared to the other sounds, um, with the lower bass, I'm filling out some of the lower bass frequencies. With the kind of slap bass, I'm filling out some of the mid frequencies. And with this, I'm kind of attacking some of the high frequencies. So you're really just trying to make the instruments play together and fill out a lot of that frequency, like I said. Um, if I were to put an equalizer on the master track, you would see that the frequency range is fairly filled out. Um, the bass is a little bit dominating here, as you can tell that this part is filled out a lot more than the rest of it. But I think that's okay because, and I don't want to get too theoretical on you guys, um, but there was actually a study released a while ago um, that described how well the human mind can track music. And they tested this on a couple of people and they found out that it was easier for the people to tap along to a lower punchier bass line than it was for them to tap along to something that contained no bass at all. So these are just some of the small things that I do keep in mind when I am mixing down a song. But I hope that kind of gives you a little bit of a theoretical background on what it is that you're trying to do when you're mixing a song. Also, if this was a song that I was actually planning on releasing, I'd probably go in and add a couple more effects to some of the sounds just to make them sound a little bit cooler. And depending on how this tutorial goes, I might actually do that, but I'm gonna do that on my own time and I don't wanna bore you with that. So now that we talked way too much about mixing the full track, we're gonna hit Control S again to save the project. And this time, I promise you, in the next video, I'm actually gonna show you how I arrange my songs. And maybe we can even get into adding a couple of effects to the songs. So I hope I didn't lose you so far. Um, like I said, if there's any questions, you know, feel free to post them in the comments. I will try to get back to you guys as soon as I can. And if not, I hope I see you in the next video. Once we got a little bit of time to adjust ourselves to the music, we can uh, kick in the drums.